Earth formed about 4.6 billion years ago. But initially there was no solid surface, no oxygen in the atmosphere, and no oceans. Earth was a molten orb. We are now traveling forward in time on the highway of life. Each yellow line passing underneath us represents 10 million years. During this time, Earth formed some solid land and liquid water oceans, and the organic molecules that are the building blocks of life began their courtship. Chemical evolution ruled the planet. Molecules that could stand the environment endured, while those that could not simply dissolved. After 600 million years, biology has taken over rising above simple molecules that could chemically duplicate themselves. We now have primitive cells living in the ocean that are the ancestors of all living things today. After another half billion years, or 3.5 billion years ago, these primitive cells have learned photosynthesis. This ability to get energy from sunlight is arguably the single most important biochemical pathway and nearly all life depends on it. And after another few eons have passed, this process will generate an oxygen-rich atmosphere. But for now, we have arrived at our first real fork in the road. It is three billion years ago, and the primitive cells have divided into two distinct camps. Archaea and bacteria look very similar. Both are single-celled microorganisms, but their DNA is very different. Some archaeans are capable of surviving in extreme habitats. They can survive in high temperatures, often above 100 degrees centigrade, as found in geysers, black smokers, and oil wells. Some thrive in saline, acidic, or extremely alkaline water. They are responsible for the brilliantly colored pools at Yellowstone that are scaldingly hot. And it is in this direction that we proceed. Now we approach our next crossroad. It is 1.4 billion years ago, and we must bid the Archaea adieu after traveling with them for 1.6 billion years. Life remains single-celled, but a new player is now on the scene. Eukaryotes are cells that have a nucleus. Today, this domain includes animals, plants, fungi, and numerous microorganisms. The origin of a cell nucleus was a milestone in the evolution of life. All complex cells, and almost all the multicellular organisms, have a cell nucleus. Not only that, eukaryotes invented sex. The next important development in our journey happened after eukaryotes developed flagellum. These eukaryotic flagellates then branched into those that had a single flagellum or those that had two or more, the unicons and the bicons. Most animal sperm and fungi spores propel themselves with a single posterior flagellum. So we can count unicons as our ancestors. In contrast, phalangeate cells and other eukaryote groups propel themselves with one or more anterior flagella. They come from bicons. Animals come from unicons, and plants come from bicons. So we must part ways with plants and protists. So long, guys. It is interesting that fungi are more closely related to animals than plants. But now, we must wave goodbye to fungi as well, as they had downtime on their own to become mushrooms and yeast and molds. Have a good life, cousins. Animals, here we come.
we have just traveled four billion years. And now the pace of evolution increases, so our pace down the highway of life must slow down in order to describe it. The lines on the highway, which used to represent 10 million years apiece, now represent only 1 million years apiece. Sponges were the first animals that had different kinds of cells doing different tasks. Some of their cells pumped water, and some filtered out tiny bits of food, but they had no real tissues. Cnidarians, anemones and their relatives, on the other hand, had muscle cells and nerve cells. This enabled them to bend, stretch, and flex. Jellyfish were probably the first animals to move using muscles. An ancient marine worm was the first animal to move purposefully. It had nerve cells that ran the length of its body, and a concentration of these cells at one end formed the first primitive brain. In fact, this was the first animal with a head, and the light-sensitive cells in that head allowed it to recognize both the direction and the intensity of light. Since it could both see and move, this worm interacted with the world in a very new way. The Cambrian began about 540 million years ago and lasted about 50 million years. During this time, the varieties of life exploded. Every group of animals living today can find their roots in the Cambrian. It is here that we part ways with the sponges. And the cnidarians and jellyfish. And platy helminthes, the flatworms. Starfish and the sea urchins and other echinoderms have just joined us, and we must already bid them goodbye. So long to the roundworms and other annelids, hello and goodbye to the mollusks and ancestors of squid and octopus. Arthropods, we hardly knew ye. Have fun giving rise to spiders, crabs, scorpions, and insects. The road ahead is our own. At this stage, our direct ancestors are the earliest chordates. 530 million years ago, the earliest chordates appeared. They look more like worms than fish, but they would give rise to all creatures with a backbone. The first true vertebrates were jawless fish with cartilage for skeletons. They lack the paired fins of fish to come. 480 million years ago, fish finally developed jaws and teeth. So long to lampreys. And 450 million years ago, the first bones. So we part ways with sharks and rays. The lungfish will carry us forward toward the next big step, tetrapods.